Okay, guys, so we're going to go over invasive species today. Last um, PowerPoint we went through, which was about two weeks ago, we learned about biological diversity. So biodiversity refers to the variety of species in an area. So quite simply, it is the amount of different types of species in one place, right? We want to measure how many different um, species live in an area. And the more biodiversity, the better for an ecosystem. So biodiversity is increased as we move towards the equator. Um, and this is due to many factors um, from, you know, us being industrialized and wiping out um, animals to just being tropical regions generally do have more species. They get more sunlight. They get more energy from the sun. So our most biological, um, biodiverse areas that we have right now are in the tropical regions. Okay. And these areas contain two thirds of all land species on the earth. So, the reason why biodiversity is so important is we know that living things are interdependent. Last week, you guys talked, looked at the different types of interdependence. So, we looked at, for example, um, with symbiosis, we looked at mutualism and parasitism and um, compensationalism, right? We looked at all these ways that we are interdependent in one another. Living things can be niches for other living things. So we learned last time that a niche is a specific feeding group. So living things can be a specific feeding group for, for things. So for example, um, we, we look at us, right? We feed off of cows, right? So we need them to be able to have sustenance. And, you know, we feed off of chickens. We feed off of a lot of diverse animals that then in turn eat a lot of diverse things. Okay. Um, populations are adapted to live together in communities. We already learned that. And most importantly, loss of biodiversity can cause instability in ecosystems. So let's move along. So let's talk about the importance to us. We already said biodiversity provides us with food. It provides us with clothing, shelter, foil, soil fertility, etc. These can cause um, instability in ecosystems, right, which gives us less food. It can also cause, it can, biodiversity can also be used to improve our health. So for example, we know that penicillin was found in a plant, right, in the in rainforest, right, diverse. We have rose periwinkle, which is using anti-cancer medication. So being able to have all of these diverse species of plants and animals then help us live better life. All right, so, Loss of biodiversity can cause instinct extinction. So we know that this is a disappearance of a species when its last member dies, right? Um, the current rate of extinction is very high. We are having a lot of endangered animals die, dying and we have no more those species. We also, we also have biodiversity also causes endangered species. So this is when the numbers come so low that extinction is possible. So here are just some animals that are endangered, right? We have the white rhino, we have pandas, we have elephants, right? The Chinese river dolphin. These are all animals that are endangered and are they're more likely to become extinct. Okay. So before we start learning about, oh, excuse my notes. Before we start learning about, um, and I don't want to show responses. Before we start learning about invasive species, I want you guys to answer the questions. What do you wonder about today's topic? So you're going to go and just jot that down in our pair deck presentation. What you wonder about today's topic. So, introducing species, right? These end up being invasive species. People sometimes introduce new species to an ecosystem, and this can be intentionally or unintentionally, right? It might come back with you from another country on your clothes or on your suitcase, or you might purposefully bring it back. You might be like, oh, this is a very nice plant. Let me bring it back. The problem is 
that these species can cause problems for native species, right? They can grow at an exponential rate due to the fact that they are not immediately as vulnerable to local competitors and predators as they are in established native species. Also, what we see with the woolly aldrich, which Ms. Jackson is going to show you kind of what your task looks like within a couple of minutes, they don't have then our ecosystems don't have the necessary protections to protect them from these invasive species. So they don't have predators that are naturally built in and they don't, and our species here don't have the protections that they need. So non-native species are transplanted population grow exponentially in new areas, right? They tend to outcompete native species. So, for example, the African honeybee, right, wiped out um, a lot of like gypsy, um, I liked out a lot of honeybees in South America and in um, Central America, right, when they were introduced to our ecosystems, right, and this is due to the lack of predators, lack of competitors, lack of parasites, right? And then the loss of natural controls, the lack of things that prohibit them from growing out of control. These species end up reducing diversity because they take away food sources, they take away um, habitats, and so they can cause a lot of problems. Some examples are the African honeybee, the gypsy moth, the zebra mussel, the purple loosestrife, and the one that we're going to get to today, which is the woolly aldrich. So I just want to give you one quick example of purple loosestrife, right? It was introduced in 1968, right? And the problem with this purple loosestrife is we can see that from 1968 to 1978, so just in the span of 10 years, it was able to overtake all the natural flora in an area. So it reduces diversity, right? It causes a loss of food and nesting sites for animals because animals, who, for example, who are used to living and eating off of a certain fauna, I mean, so flora are now having issues because they don't have that food anymore. Okay, so what I want you guys to do, and this is another one, it's just a quick temperature check. I want to see how you're feeling about today's assignment. So you're going to drag and drop the dot, whether you need me to stop, you need more information, you're okay, you're a little shaky, but you want, but you, you know, you're, you might be able to move on or whether you're good to go. So you're going to drop that there. So your task for this week was to, for the species that you chose, tell us where your species originally came from, how and when it was brought to this country, what features the species, of the species make it invasive, and in, uh, in the rest of these questions. So we're doing task four today where you're creating uh, either brochure or PowerPoint or some way to demonstrate what you learned about your invasive species. So for those of you who want to walk through it, if you go to ecology week three, because when I put it up, it was week three and week four, you can go into this Google Doc. You were responsible for assignments one, two, and three last week. And when you were doing number three, you were using the resources below to choose an invasive species in your region, right? You can choose, uh, it says Massachusetts. I'm sorry, I forgot to change that to New York. You may choose any invasive organism as long as it has been documented in New York. You may not choose the woolly aldrich. We'll re research that together. So you're making a list of the invasive species found in New York. You're gonna circle, bold, underline, which, and which one you wanna study. Right, and Ms. Jackson gave you three sources to look at. So, here, let me go over here to the actual document. When you click on, and just give it a second, scroll down. When you click on these links, so for example, this one says species information, New York invasive species. When you click on the link, it'll take you to a site that lists all of the invasive species. So you can quite easily just copy paste this into your document and you're going to choose which one 
you want to do. Miss Jackson wanted to do the Wooly Aldrich. So let me scroll down to where I see that. I just saw it earlier. Do, 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 do. Give me a second. It's a plant. Oh, there we go. Here I am. Hemlock Wooly Outrage, right? So, boom. And this will give me a lot of information that I'm looking for for this animal. And if you see, we can even see how it affected New York State. This is given, this was created in 2013, but we can see that it's mostly in the New York City area, um, merging its way towards upstate. Right? So, as I'm reading more, there's videos that tell me about these insects, right? So, there's all types of things that help me kind of figure out what's going on. You guys are going to, like I said, create your presentation where you're answering all of these questions. Right, so for example, Miss Jackson, she, this is her start of her presentation, and the Hemlock Willie Aldridge is native to Japan and possibly China, where it's considered a common inhabitant of both forests and or or mental hemlock spruce trees. Now, one thing to note is these trees have natural protections against the woolly aldridge, which our our hemlock trees do not. So. It was first detected in East Coast of North America in Richmond, Virginia in the mid 50s and since has accidentally been introduced from since it was accidentally introduced from southern Japan. Right? It has spread to 18 states from Georgia to Maine, devastating populations of Eastern and Carolina hemlock. So, as you know, Ms. Jackson went to the sex and she found the answers to the questions and she made a quick PowerPoint. You guys can present your work however you feel the need to. So, I want you guys to quickly reflect on today's activity and tell me what was easy for you, what was hard, um, how do you feel about this. And you have, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in here. And as you guys start to respond, I will see your answers. All right. So have a good day. I'll actually see some of you who show up at 11 in about 30 minutes. Have a good day.